Using tech to revolutionize the coffee experience. That's our text donation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from a company called Bunafer, B-U-N-A-F-R, is founder and CEO Anjani Anamala. Hi, Anjani. Hi, Fred. Great to see you. And there are so many different ways to make coffee, high tech, low tech, everything in between. You're taking coffee lovers, I guess, back to the start of the process in a way here with the Bunifer Roaster. Tell us about it. That's right. That's right. And that's how coffee started. Coffee was uh, uh, discovered in Ethiopia where they freshly roasted coffee and drank after it was a ceremony. It was uh, Coffee has a lot more to do it when you freshly roast it. So the reason we are going back about it is because uh, many there are many reasons, but three primary reasons. Um, coffee's carbon footprint is astronomical, 150 billion kilograms per year. And that has happened because of there are so many supply chain entities that sit between the coffee producer and the coffee drinker. There are 20 plus supply chain uh, 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 entities and touch points. By roasting coffee at home, we can significantly reduce that to five or six, uh, and thus save a lot of carbon footprint, uh, the miles that travel between producer to, farm, uh, producer to consumer. Also, green coffee bean has a shelf life of 18 months, versus roasted coffee loses most of its flavors within eight days. So people who are really buying coffee at the grocery store, unfortunately, most of us are drinking stale coffee that doesn't have any flavors. That's the need to add the additional external flavors and syrups and cream and sugar, all that stuff, right? But a good light roasted coffee, single origin, is, is delicious in itself. You don't need anything else. Uh, so customers are not really getting served uh, with this current industry where we have people are drinking stale coffee. And when people really want to buy freshly roasted coffee from their local uh, roasters or even the high-end roasters like Blue Bottle and others, they are paying anywhere from $30, $35 a pound. But you'd be surprised to know, but farmers are probably getting like $2 or $3 a pound. Um, and um, so I think we thought about it. Okay, so farmers are getting stuck. Customers don't get what they want. Environment is getting uh, impacted. What is the best way to solve this problem? Uh, after a lot of research and my background in supply chain technology, we thought democratizing roasting is going to make this coffee supply chain um, more streamlined, more efficient, and a level playing field for the farmers. Sorry, and that was a long explanation. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about your background and what your motivation was for, for trying to do this. Yeah, absolutely. My background, um, um, I did my electrical engineering, worked in, uh, worked as a software engineer, and then went to B school, then worked at Amazon uh, supply chain, uh, worldwide consumable expansion, fresh and pantry expansion um, across 10 different countries, uh, building the North American fulfillment network, last mile, all that stuff. So I know retail from Amazon very well, retail and supply chain. And I loved coffee. Being in Seattle, like we talked about uh, earlier, being in Seattle, I used to go to different coffee shops um, and love coffee. When, when COVID hit, I was not able to go to these coffee shops. And I started making my own espressos at home using the same beans that I get from these local roasters. Unfortunately, the, my coffee was not tasting the same after three or four days. And when I discovered the reason, when I did the dive deep and understood why that's happening, it was because of the freshness. And uh, that made me think if freshness is so important, like in any other food and beverage, why don't we roast coffee freshly at home, uh, right? And people said, oh, it's complicated. And then on the other side, I saw companies were shipping four pounds and eight, uh, four, four ounces in eight ounce bags over the air next day to keep the coffee fresh. And then I discovered green coffee bean has 18 months of shelf life. That's when it kind of triggered me. It's like, <laughs> you can't roast it freshly, uh, but in order to keep it fresh, we are shipping smaller quantities more often over the air. It's just gonna make carbon footprint even worse. Um, 
And uh, finally, like uh, when it comes to really personalized coffee, I discovered every origin of coffee is so different. And people say they love coffee, but customers are not getting access to it. So my background in supply chain and my passion for coffee is what drove this. So tell us about the machine that you came up with here. Describe it for us and, and yeah. step, us, step us through the user experience. Absolutely. But the experience is very simple. And we knew in order for customers to use the machine, it has to be very, very simple. So what we worked backwards from customers, um, user experience and design. So the experience is like customers get once a month a green coffee bean delivered. They take that bag, they scan it against the roaster. The roaster has the RFID scanner, and there's a small RFID um, in the bag. Now, once they scan it, now the roaster knows everything about the uh, coffee, which origin it is, which bean, what the bean characteristics are, which we collect separately. And it also knows what customers like. So all the user has to do is add the green beans and push the button. And the roaster will do an automated roasting that is suitable to, let's say, your or my roast profile. If I like light versus like medium, it knows it does that. It knows the different origins. And then it takes about 10 minutes or even less to roast about half a pound of coffee, which is good for more than a week, like eight to 10 days it goes, typically if you're doing espressos or pour overs or drip. So the rally proposition is. Scan the bag, add beans, push the button, and you get the best cup of coffee without a, paying any attention to it for the entire week. The roaster also um, almost pushes the beans into a vacuum storage container. So all the user has to do is put the lid and they're good for the week. Um, so that's the UX. Very interesting. So do owners of the Bonifer machine, will they need to always buy their beans uh, from from the company here? From our, if they buy green, be, green beans from our company, we have done all the roasting science work and the legwork of optimizing and perfecting the roast profile for the beans and they get it with the scan. But they can use any green beans um, and they might not get that optimal roast profile. They have to tinker with it. So that's why we have an app that goes with it. If someone wants to create their own roast profile, they can also play with the settings and create their own proprietary roast profile too. Interesting. So what does this work out to? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the price of the machine, I guess, separately. Yeah. But what, what will it work out to in terms of the cost of a cup of coffee in comparison? To Absolutely. That's a great question. So 30 cents per cup is what it's going to cost. So green beans of the highest quality, um, including shipping and everything, you can get it delivered at six ninety five per pound. And if you're drinking um, typical double shot espresso, we did the math. It costs around thirty cents a cup compared to let's say if you're getting a roasted coffee subscription um, on the specialty coffee that costs anywhere around dollar forty or dollar fifty cents per cup in the Coffee shops is a different story, as we all know. So uh, roaster itself pays back. It's um, our, our reality proposition is you're essentially getting a quality better than a cafe quality, a more personalized at the comfort of the home, but at the cost of grocery store or fortunes. How expensive? How expensive is the machine? Machine is um, our MSRP is eight ninety nine. Um, we're still running an early board promotions of seven forty nine right now. So eight ninety nine is the MSRP. All right. So <laughs> there are a lot of people who spend a lot of money on you know fancy coffee makers and things. I guess that's that's the market you go after first, right? Exactly. We we, we go out, we go after uh, gourmet coffee lovers who already have a coffee grinder at home. And uh, they do our espresso, pour overs, uh, drip, whatever. But they they know the importance of grinding coffee at home. That and they those are the people. And then eventually we need to target the people who buy ground coffee too. It's a bigger market. 
So what does this do to the environment in the, in the household, if anything? Is this a, is the scent of the coffee roasting, which may or may not be a bad thing, uh, really, yeah. really permeating the house or, or what? Yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. And uh, so if you like the smell of a freshly ground coffee, uh, I tell people like they will love the fresh smell of the freshly roasted coffee even more. But the key there is after removal of smoke, coffee roasting, like most of the roasting, produces some amount of smoke. And uh, that's where our technology is built. There's no roaster today in the market that actually a smokeless operation. They all produce smoke, trigger the smoke alarm, or you have to open the doors and windows, blah, 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 right? Uh, but with our machine, it's works for smokeless. So we absorb all the smoke, only the nice aromas come out of the machine. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful aromas, but there's no smoke. Terrific. And, you know, I've read about people trying all kinds of things, even popcorn makers and things yes, like I, that to try to roast coffee right. at home. And uh, I guess that can be a tricky process. Oh, well, yeah, it is tricky. I mean, I have done it too. It's a, it's a very judgment. Uh, it's, it requires a lot of human judgment, right? You have to look at it. It's a very involved process. And one of our value proposition is we want to make it a one push button, less involved. So popcorn popper is involved because the shaft goes everywhere. You have to clean up. You have to take clean attention to the color of the beans, whether they're cracking or not. So everything is manual and there's no controls. It's just one heat and one fan, right? One level. And that might even burn the beans. Uh, versus um, a machine like us, we have multiple different controls that pay, that plays into this roasting science of how the heat is applied over the course of the time. And that's what defines the taste. So how can people get in line to buy one? Tell us about it. You can, you can go to the website. Uh, we just closed our Indiegogo uh, earlier this week, but we are selling pre-orders on our website. Go to bunofa.com and um, you can look for the roaster and pre-order it. We're going to be shipping it in summer this year. Um, still, we have a $7.49 price. From Monday, I think it's going to go to $8.99, so it's still a good time to um, get those savings a little bit. Terrific. Again, it's bunafer.com, B-U-N-A-F-R.com. Anjani Anamala, thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, Fred. It's completely my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me.